temperatures are rising, the sun's out, perfect opportunity for me on this triangle to crack on with the renovations because as you know we're not going to have any auxiliary water in here, we're totally reliant on rainfall and we've got three days of rain due so what a perfect time to get on with our feeding, seeding, top dressing and our wetting agent. So let's get on with it. Throughout history men have always been drawn to grass whether it be in the park, a sports ground or simply in your own garden. There's just something about those quintessential British stripes that makes you want them for yourself. Not to mention getting one over on your neighbours. Follow Daniel on his lawn journeys in his step-by-step -step videos this year whilst you create your own lawn journey, achieving that dream lawn you have always wanted with simple and easy to follow methods. The lawn you have always dreamed of is only a grass seed away. Now sit back and enjoy the video. Oh, and one more thing. If you want to subscribe, you know what to do. So you can see I've got my root zone here, ready to go, delivered by Easy Lawn. And we need to cut now. Even though I cut it Thursday, it's grown again a little bit. So we're gonna do some double stripes because I only did uh, single stripes on um, Thursday, not thinking ahead. So I need to cut it now, put the double stripes in so when I'm spraying I know where I'm going. Then we will apply the wetting agent and then we will apply our feed and then we'll apply our seed and then we'll apply the sand. Now why are you asking am I feeding when I say you don't need a pre-seed fertiliser? It's not for a pre-seed fertiliser, it's because the sand's very heavy and I don't think at the minute there's enough power in this lawn if it's not been fed really for years. It's only had a little bit of nitrogen. There's not enough power there for it to power through what we're going to put on top of it. So I'm going to feed it as well, just for belt and braces, so that the old lawn can grow through this heavy sand. Uh, and that's why, that's why I'm doing that. So we'll crack on, get the mower out, and then we'll take it from there. Just about to mix up our H2O wetting agent. Now, the manufacturer recommends 400 mils per 100 square meters for the initial application. So it's very important that we measure it out so we know where we are with it. I'm just going to treat that as 100 square meters because that's roughly what it is. So I'm going to put 400 in. It's very important when you're mixing a wetting agent together, always add the wetting agent to your big vat of water, never add the water that way because it won't mix. So you just pour it in like that. And just rinse your, rinse your jug out. It's quite gloopy so it can stick to the inside uh, you don't want to waste any because it is expensive stuff. And that's how you mix your wetting agent, easy. And then pour it in your sprayer. Okay, so that uh, wetting agent went down pretty well. Just on now with some rise and shine. Like I say, just give us that uh, plume of growth to get it through the sand and then the seed can just do whatever it wants as and when it wants. Because um, there's enough lawn here to just uh, regenerate and probably give us a decent lawn, but just while we're doing the top dressing, because we're doing the leveling of the ribbing down there, we might as well just throw some grass seed down. So I've just picked up a few cheap boxes from Home Bargains because I'm on a hundred pound budget here for the uh, material. So, I've got to um, be careful because that root zone is now about 65 quid. Um, so we're cutting it fine. Okay, so I've just put the uh, feed on. I forgot to press film and did it and I came back and it was on. So I've not been able to show you that. But you know what it is, just me walking up and down with the spreader, spreading the stuff. But now I've got the seed ready to go. I'll definitely film that. Okay, so I've got my barrel load of root zone here. I'm not just going to tip it all out in one pile because it will take forever to drag around and you can end up with a hump because you don't quite remove 
all of it from one area. So I've done that before and learned my lesson and bringing you my wisdom. So I'm just gonna literally tip it out in little piles over this area where we've got the ribbon. No. It'd be better in the long run for us just to do these little piles and you'll see in a sec. So I'll just quickly <coughs> move that out of the way. Grab my rake. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to fill these voids in here, but not really leave any soil on there. So we just want to push there like that. And what you can do if you want, you can push it with the back end of your rake and that'll make sure that you're level with the top of the, of the high bits and then there'll be enough sand in like the hollow so it's all level but one more important thing that you can't do when you're using sand is screed it like that and leave it because it'll just dry like concrete and the grass won't be able to push through so when you've done your screeding and you think you've got it as level as you want it and got rid of those ribbon lines you then just pull back and just re-tilt it so it's nice and crumbly on the surface. I don't need to then go over and walk on that and then rake it again because you just, it's a pointless exercise because if I go and stand on that and then rake it again, I'm just disturbing what I've just squashed down so it's pointless. So again, we just drag it and pull it this is why you can't use a leaf rake on a job like this because you need the pushing and pulling action. Soil rake will do, just I've got this one that I got last year. It is, I think it is a little bit too big, but it'll get the job done quicker, which is what we want today because it is absolutely freezing. So you see, because I've, I've not piled it all in one place, I'm not having to drag, drag it miles like you would do. Everything's local to where I need it. And as you get more experienced at doing these things, you'll know exactly where to, where to tip your piles and uh, save yourself a load of hard work. So you know, so I'm just dragging all this over here. We've not really got the ribbing problem over here, so we're just looking to leave a nice tilty finish on the top just to cover that seed over like that and what you can also do is even though sometimes you have left it all nice and raked on top if it's absolutely baking the, the it can still dry quite hard and compact and grass won't grow through so what I sometimes do is give it a couple of days to dry out and then I come back with my brush and then I just brush the dry root zone into the surface because by this time the grass has hopefully grown a little bit as well. So we're just uh, finishing this bit off. Hopefully I'll have enough to do the whole job. It's looking like I will, I might have some left over. But what I'm putting on here, the lawn on the other side is made of and I've been digging out um, wee grasses uh, this week, last week on Thursday, I spent a good hour and I got a couple of flexi tubs of annual meadow grass. So there's quite a few holes in that lawn, which I can throw this into knowing it's exactly the same stuff that is underneath. And then we'll start the renovations on that when it warms up a bit more. It's still a bit cold at the moment because that one's a premier pitch lawn that takes forever to get going that stuff um, so we need that to be proper temperatures need to be quite high for that because you end up getting to the same place at the same time whether you see it now or in four weeks you would still get to the same finish line at the exact same time as if you did it for two weeks later so that's that one, 
that's going to solve our ribbing problem. So that's how you do that. Time to get on with the rest. I've just got a little bit left over in the tongue bag there, which is good because I've got a few jobs I want to do with that on this side. I'm trying or I'm thinking about digging up. You just see there where it's all yellow. Well, that's uh, onion meadow grass. But this doubles up as a Formula One racetrack, uh, this road as well, which is interesting because most people think that it is. Um, so I'm just going to take that out and refill it with the root zone and then feather it back down to the flag and reseed it all because it's just really bad there. Um, I've been trying for years to get rid of it just by digging it out but it just keeps coming back so we will uh, do that with what we've got left over. We're getting onto this, nice coverage all over, nicely raked, ready for the rains tomorrow, Tuesday and Wednesday. And then I think it's uh, sunny Thursday, so that'll be really good to get them temperatures up in the soil, get that water warm from the sun, and then that, then get the seed up and running and this lawn underneath through. So I'm really excited about where we're going with this one. I know obviously you yeah, get excited about the other side, but that's expected because of the, the quality that's in there, whereas this is just total rubbish. So if we can get this looking half decent um, from where we were six weeks ago, it'll be an absolute, uh, Triumph won it, maybe one of the best turnarounds that I've done. Um, so far it's the paddy job which is the best turnaround but could this rival that and uh, pip it into first place? Time will tell. One thing we can't do is rush time or nature. So remember that. Just to tell you about sand, you can't use or build a sand or sharp sand. You can use river wash sand, that's okay, but you can't use any of the others. One reason is that they could burn children because they're um, basically very limey and secondly like grass doesn't like lime so there's no chance a seed will grow in it. So stay away from those. What you are looking for is a pH neutral root zone. Um, if it's possible get a certificate that it's been tested off the STRI which is the Sports Tech Research Institute which this has. So this is fine I've, and I've done an acid test on this and this is uh, green pH neutral so that's why it, all the grass thrives in this so again just to reiterate you can't use builder sand, sharp sand or plastering sand. So another job chalked off the list, hopefully this one will be as good as all my others. So join me next time when we'll get on with some more lawn care work.